That ends up being an important question for us because uh, one of the themes that we use to run the company is having a diversity of opportunity. And uh, the reason that's so important is there's never any one thing that you can point to in Honeywell where you say, you know, when that product takes off, that geography, that business, whatever it is, it makes Honeywell. <clears throat> By the same token, there's never any one product, geography, or business where if things don't go well, Honeywell it does poorly. So I always want enough bets in enough places where the company will always do well. Uh, that means that we need opportunity geographically, we need it in products, we need it in the businesses that we're in, and that's why you've seen us structure the company so that we're focused on macro trends, that we're in good spots in macro trends, that uh, we continue to become more global, and we've made a, a big change there, uh, and that we keep driving this uh, new product side. So what that means is we have opportunity everywhere, so this ability to recognize it ends up being important. Uh, I'd like to think I make my own contribution there. So for example, noticing five or six years ago that there seemed to be a lot of natural gas fines, that's helpful and helped to position us better when it comes to gas. But even more importantly is for in every one of those geographies, in every one of those businesses, the technology leader, the marketing leader, the business leader, all of them have to constantly be attuned to thinking this way and having a new product onslaught that will allow us to take advantage of it. So we spend a lot of time making sure we develop the right kind of culture that causes people everywhere to constantly be looking. How are they going to grow? How are they, uh, what are the new product trends? What are the new technologies that are coming out? But it's a big part of just driving the culture of the company. Because I can't do it myself, neither can a business leader. Uh, everybody's constantly got to be looking and in that hopefully surfeit of ideas that we end up having, only the best ones survive and we have thousands of them that we're supporting. That's um, one that we've discussed internally also because there are people who say, no, it's technology forward. Other people know it starts a customer back. And I've always thought that successful innovation requires both. You can't just be the technology guys going forward because it's pretty easy to develop a technology that's exciting but that nobody wants. By the same token, if you're just starting with a customer, you don't always know what's possible. Right, because technology is a driver of what's possible. So it's that intermarriage between the two, and it's why we uh, drive. In fact, some of us, uh, some of our businesses call it two in a box, where the marketing guy and the technology guy are together, and they have to focus on everything together. So that from marketing, you're getting that customer back, so you understand not just expressed needs but unexpressed needs. And from a technology forward, it's hey, what's possible? What do customers even know that this stuff? exists, how can we put some of these technologies together and drive something that can address some of those unexpressed needs that maybe even the marketing guy doesn't know is unexpressed. So I've always felt it was both. You can't, you shouldn't just pick one or the other. You need to do both. And we, and we spend a lot of our time focused on making sure we do both. I'd probably break it into three pieces. Um, first would be portfolio, second would be culture, and the third would be internal processes. <clears throat> CEO has a huge impact on portfolio. And if you take a look at what we've done, uh, 10 years ago we were a $22 billion company, this year we'll be almost $40 billion, and that includes about $10 billion of acquisitions and about $6 billion worth of divestitures and we've significantly changed the mix of the portfolio consistent with macro trends and having great positions in good industries. Uh, the second one <clears throat> is you have to develop a culture that allows people to do things like recognize the opportunities that we talked about, to be able to do that technology out, uh, marketing in, uh, to be able to say, here's what I need in my global market, whether I'm in China or India or Indonesia, I mean, wherever, wherever you are. And you have to develop this culture where people want to make things happen. And I oftentimes say uh, the trick is in the doing. That if you compared, we'll say, management resource review manuals, new product introduction manuals, 
a commitment to customer service. Most big companies, it all looks the same. All right, our new product introduction process is not gonna be that different than somebody else's. Our commitment to customer service, there's no company out there that says, customers, nah, we don't really care all that much. You know, everybody says, yeah, customers are important. But how well do you actually do it? That's where the trick is in the doing, actually making this stuff happen and creating a culture where people look at it that way and say, you know, I'm not just gonna say what they wanna hear, but I'm gonna say what I think is true and I don't have to worry about repercussions if uh, they disagree with me, they want the facts, uh, these are gonna be fact-based discussions, we're gonna get something done. Having that kind of a culture makes a huge difference. That one Honeywell, if you take a look at where we started with three different cultures in the company based because of big acquisitions to where we are today with the one Honeywell culture, having that right kind of can-do culture makes a huge difference. The third step is the internal processes, which we've kind of alluded to before. So whether it's uh, the really big ones like new product introduction and order to delivery, but also how do you conduct all your staff functions, what we call functional transformation. How do you standardize processes? How do you mechanize them to the extent that you can so that you end up with better service at a lower cost? CEO is hugely impactful in all three of those areas, portfolio, culture, and internal processes. And if I'm not driving that and thinking about that every day and discussing it with my own people, then the company's not gonna do it. It's not gonna happen on its own. The CEO has a major role, it seems to me, in all three of those.